Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. In yesterday's vlog, I mentioned that I wanted to have a knife build video coming out today. And you know, I was under a really good start. Things were really going well. I was making this uh, barbecue slash meat slicing knife for myself. Uh, this is actually out of uh, Nitro V, which is a new type of stainless. It's kind of a derivative of AEB-L razor steel. And I was really excited about this and uh, things were coming good. And then out of the heat treat, bam, we had this huge warp in the blade. So that obviously put a major dent and I was kind of like, what on earth am I going to do? I've got no content to come out and I really wanted to have a knife build video. By this point in time, it was late in the afternoon and I thought, you know what? Why don't I just see how quickly I could possibly make a knife? This is me trying to make a knife as fast as I possibly can so I could have this video ready to release. So I figured, you know what? Let's try drawing a knife, something I've never done. And uh, kind of picked out a chunk of steel that I could use, something that I had laying around. And I just drew a bunch of designs, but nothing was feeling right. Nothing was, I don't know, it just was not working out for me. So we uh, refer to our big book of knife designs, previous knives that I had designed but never yet made. And uh, that looks like that might be a winner right there. It'll fit on the stock that we're using, so I think we're just going to go for it. Uh, I just kind of trace it onto another piece of paper here, cut that out with my little X-Acto knife, and then we're going to glue that onto some O1 tool steel. 426. Uh, I thought this build would only take me like a, an hour or two. I don't know why. Anyways, we just chop this sucker out, get as much done as we can in the portable bandsaw, and then we'll profile it on the bell grinder. Uh, this is kind of actually, the blade shape reminds me of the jump knife that I had made previously, if you've seen that video. Uh, it's a pretty cool little little blade shape, and uh, yeah, I think this can be a cute little one. This is one of those knives I was like, why on earth hadn't I made this before? Then we'll jump onto my homemade horizontal belt grinder and finish uh, some of the inside radiuses and shaping up that handle. Getting it all nice and comfortable and get everything cleaned up. All right, now we're just going to put a little sharpie on the edge and we're going to mark our center line, our grind line, so that we know uh, we've got a visual reference to grind to. And for that I just used the knife maker scribe that I would made. I've got a video on that somewhere in the old video library on this channel. Anyways, the next step we will drill the holes for our pins. And uh, I'm going to use quarter inch black phenolic pins on this knife. So I drill a couple pilot holes and then finish it off with the quarter inch. And in the interest of saving time, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to use a grinding jig that I'd made previously. Uh, this is a super simple way to make a grinding jig. It's basically, I think it was like a piece of one inch by three quarter inch bar stock. And I machined an angle in my milling machine, and that's that's a very specific angle for the last ditch necker knives that I have. Uh, actually, you know what, Mike uh, from Ecom Knives had a really interesting uh, video. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Uh, he talks about, you know, using jigs and not using jigs, and somehow people think it's this big, I don't know, people get all hung up on it. You know what, sometimes jigs are awesome, freehand grinding's awesome, uh, but you know, for a lot of those little last ditch necker knives, it, it takes so long uh, to freehand grind uh, that I find it just so much easier if I use a little jig like this, I get much more consistent results. I'll finish it off by hand, but I like to get the initial bevels ground in pre-heat treat with a jig. I still do freehand for all my hollow grinds, but with results like that, why wouldn't you use a jig? And again, trying to speed this build up as fast as I could. Rather than using my electric furnace, my digital knife maker's kiln, I thought, you know what, I'm going to slap this sucker in the forge because it heats it up so fast. And then we give it the old quench. Slow motion quench, it always looks better. Indeed, it skates a file. The file does not cut into it, so that's a really quick, simple way to tell whether your knife has been hardened. And then we're going to temper it. I'm doing two temper cycles, 400 degrees for 25 minutes each cycle, and I let it air cool in between each temper cycle. All right, the scales for this one, I'm going to use a couple layers of G10. So I've got this blue G10, which I believe is... I think it's only eighth of an inch thick. And so I'm just kind of marking out my pieces there. And we'll cut those out. And then I'll also cut out a couple of G10 liners. I'm going to do white and black. Essentially, I'm just going to make them the exact same size there. And then cut those out. And I'll rough up all the surface with some really aggressive sandpaper to help the epoxy stick when we go glue these all together. Clean everything up with lacquer thinner, make sure we get all the dust off and get those surface prepped. Lay down some tape, mix up some epoxy, and then we'll glue these things. 
I just use a little craft paper there. It's kind of like a wax paper sort of, and uh, just kind of make a little sandwich. Uh, I like that closed on the one side because it keeps the edges nice and level. And then I'll just put this in my vise and let that epoxy harden. Once that's done, we'll clean them up. That little black liner kind of got out on me a little bit, but it was enough that I could salvage it, so that's cool. I'll try and make these into uh, square usable stock. And then I take 120 grit sandpaper and I just get rid of any epoxy that was left on the white side of the scales. Uh, that's the side that's going to be glued to the knife, so I want to make sure we get that nice and flat and true. I'm just going to lay out roughly where the knife is going to go. I'll mark out the length of the pin so I can get those cut down. And we're on to drilling the pinholes. Keeping pins in there to make sure we have everything located properly as we continue drilling the new holes. And then I cut out any excess material in my portable bandsaw. And we'll shape the end of the handle there, make sure we get that all nicely done up, because that part you cannot adjust once it's glued on. And then I'm fortifying this one, and I've actually never done this where I'll actually grind that chamfer right to the very edge of the white liner. I thought it'd be kind of nice because that way you can actually see both liners when you're looking at the blade from the side. Uh, none of them are hidden, so it actually turned out pretty good. Just, just kind of took this process slow. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, uh, but it kind of turned out. And then we'll just take some sandpaper and kind of clean that up. Get a really nice finish because again, that part is pretty much unworkable once we have, once we have the whole knife glued together. Wipe everything down with lacquer thinner again. And then we will glue these scales on. Using a DevCon 5-minute epoxy. Everything here was a 5-minute epoxy because I wanted to get this knife built as fast as I possibly could. Clamp that in there, and I let this dry for about 20 minutes. <laughs> Probably it's a, I wouldn't recommend that. I, I don't recommend trying to build a knife as fast as you can either. This was like a Mondo rush job, but hey, you know what? We gotta get a video out, and uh, sometimes you just do what you gotta do. I'm gonna take the old belt grinder, and I actually use my old ceramic 36 grit belts. Once they're kind of done their life with steels, I find they actually work really good for shaping the handle materials and synthetics and stuff like that. And uh, now we're gonna finish shaping up these uh, the inside parts. And again, you know what, I had these camera mounts made for, you know, getting good shots of what I was doing, but I was in such a rush, I just I just couldn't use those for this video, so I apologize for the a lackluster, uncinematic build quality here, but when you're under a time crunch and all you want is a video done, that's kind of what happens. Doing a little bit of a coke bottle profile on the handles here, so I'll use my 10 inch contact wheel for that. Then once I got it fairly close, I'll use a scalloped belt and kind of this little arm that I made for my grinder. Just gives me a long, flat section, slack section of the belt that I can grind on. And we really didn't do any uh, hand profiling on this handle at all. Uh, everything was with a machine so that we could be fast and speedy. And then we'll kind of buff it, polish up those scales. I think I took everything here to about 400 grit, so I didn't go super crazy uh, in the interest of time, obviously. But uh, give that a buff, clean it all up. And we're going to call that good right there. 9.43 in the evening, so let's add roughly 5 hours and 15 minutes to build this little knife. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I honestly, I really thought I would have it done quicker than 5 hours and 15 minutes, but I guess when you look at it, if I had started this knife at like 7 o'clock in the morning, it would have been done, you know, right after lunchtime. So uh, there's also a little time in there where I was uh, talking with our electrician in the evening, and then obviously you waste time with your, not waste, but time is lost in your temper cycles and cooling down, stuff like that. So all in all, it's a fun little build. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this, guys. Again, you know what? This was not a really high production value, and I really was just trying to rush through the making of this knife. So on that part, I apologize, but I really, really wanted to get a video done. So you know what? If you like this video, guys, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for watching. Cheers.